How's it going guys, SexHD here with the third offseason of mine and Sod's Race to the Cup GM Mode series. Sod didn't win the Stanley Cup in the third season, so luckily we're still live here. Have a shot at it next season, hopefully he doesn't win it. I definitely don't want to tie, I want to try to win this thing next season and uh, finally finish him off. So as you guys can see, we're at the draft now. We don't have any high draft picks this year, I think our highest is a fourth. And I think we have like a couple fourths, a fifth, and a sixth. So um, those picks are probably not going to turn out into anything that can help us. But hopefully we can get the best player available and just use them as assets for a trade or something. So uh, we'll send our pick here and see what's available. So we actually had the first pick in the fourth round, which is kind of crazy. So I forget whose fourth round pick that is, but whoever it is, uh, they finished last. So it's kind of like a third round pick. So that's a nice surprise. Uh, we'll sort by projected here, see what's available. I'm sure there's still some third and fourth round guys. And there are uh, three available. All have lot high league interest. I'll also have AHL potential though, which isn't the greatest. Uh, we'll see what our scouts have. So AHL top six forward here is the highest, and then the lowest AHL starter. So I mean, might as well just uh, go with one of those third slash fourth round projected guys, as there's no one else with much higher projection. So a defenseman, a center, a right wing, all have high league interest. Two fourth line forwards and a top four D. We'll just go with the defenseman here. He's the first on the list. And he's a 7th D, so a bit better uh, than what it said. Our next pick, guys, is actually the 5th pick in the 4th round, so another high pick. We must have traded away our 4th round pick and uh, just kept these two, so pretty solid, actually. Um, we'll see if any of those 3rd slash 4th guys are still available. Um, none of them are, but that's alright. Um, we'll see, I think potential, there was one guy that was projected 4th round that had like, the highest potential for us. So yeah, this guy here, uh, Bergenheim, HL top 6 forward, 4th round, no league interest. Maybe he's like a hidden gem or something. Let's go with him. And low top nine forward in the fourth round. That's a steal. Our next pick, guys, is the fifth pick in the fifth round. So we'll see what we can get here. Uh, maybe we can get another steal. That last pick worked out extremely well. So uh, we'll sort of gen by uh, projected here and just kind of hope we find, you know, another steal. Uh, this guy's a playmaker, HL bomb six, high league interest. Let's try this guy here, Gareffa. HL bomb six, so exactly what it said. This is our last pick, guys, in the sixth round, the fifth pick. So we'll see what we can get here. Um, I don't know how we got the fifth pick, because um, I'm pretty sure like we made the playoffs and everything, but I'm not even gonna question it. Whatever. So uh, this guy here, fifth slash sixth, I don't know. HL top four D. That looks like the highest potential. There's these two guys here, but both have high league interest. I'm just gonna go with the first guy on the list, though. Screw it. Maybe we get lucky again with a no league interest guy. HL top two D. So. Not too bad. We're not the re-sign phase with only six and a half million in cap space, so it's gonna be tough to re-sign everybody. I don't think any of like the big name players need re-signed, but uh, we'll have to take a look here at who does. Uh, so Nielsen here, 84, 30, 34 years old. He was just a rental player. Uh, definitely letting him go. Uh, Cernic here, I think I'll make a qualifying offer on. It'll be less than a million. It'll be two way. Cerbosa, 25. We can let him go. Uh, let some of the younger guys start playing. No one else there at center. Left wing here, Nylander needs a new deal, so that's pretty much all of our money, probably. Forsberg, Marchand, Lemieux, uh, DeBrusque and Kachuk are signed. Eriksson's 80 overall now, 32 years old. That makes sense. He was playing like fourth line. Halischek there, 30 years old, 80 overall. He can be released as well. Right there's that Bergenheim guy, 62, so not too bad. We'll wait on Nylander here uh, to see who else is kind of needing a deal. Kyler Johnson, uh, still good. Yakupov. Pasternak, Connolly needs a deal, 82 overall, 26 years old. This Osmic guy though, 2281. I think he can just take Connolly's place at this point. We'll let Connolly go. Uh, next year, guys, we have Arvidsson. We picked him up off waivers. He's 25, 79 overall. I think he's not good enough for the NHL. I'll let the younger AHL guys, you know, play in his place. This look guy needs a new deal. Um, hopefully, it's two way and it is. We'll just give him like 750 for one deal. He'll take it. He's a 21 year old RFA. Uh, these three guys are all signed. So that's pretty much our four. HL right wingers and those are our four NHL right wingers so that's all locked up defense here CC's a 94 now we got Larson there locked up Burns Krug Theodore needs a new deal and he's 86 overall now so of course as soon as this deal is over he's now an 86 opposed to the 82 he was before that Gardner's an 85 there so that's our top six that's a dirty top six like 86 and 85 on the bottom pairing uh you lady there's an 82 now wanting to come up same with Russo probably Mueller so We'll see what Theodore wants. We need him and Nylander both signed. So he only wants 3.75, and he's 86. That's that's extremely fair. We'll give him 3.5 here for three years. I'm sure he'll accept that. Russo, we basically, he's 82, but I can't afford to give him anything more than a qualifying offer. Um, if somebody makes him an offer, they'll, they'll probably just get him. 
Party here when release him, 34 years old. Do not need him anymore. Uh, Miller, 25, 78. We can release him. We have a bunch of much better younger guys. Like our HLD is going to be really good. Um, Hunwick here, we can also release. I think he was just like an add on in some trade. And let's see, just a couple unsigned guys, both 60s. Not worth re signing. Uh, Force lane here, 22. Okay, we'll re sign him. Um, we'll just give him like, yeah, 700k, two year, two way deal. Goalies here, Tuka Rask is still signed. Gillies needs a new deal as the backup. He wants one and a half. We'll give him 1.3 for two years. Hopefully he says yes to this. HL goalies are locked up. So that basically just means we have to re-sign Nylander, who I'm sure is going to want. Five million is actually pretty reasonable. And I think we can qualify him right now and then trade away somebody to open up that cap space. So our team is pretty much, you know, maxed out on the cap here. Um, who we trade away, I'm not sure yet. Uh, but definitely we're going to have to. Um, so I'll make him the contract offer. Um, I'm sure it'll say we don't have enough money, but maybe it'll let us do it. I don't know. Um, and if not, I'll just qualify him. So I'll give him like $5 million here for three years. And as you guys can see, Nylander actually did accept our offer. Uh, Theodore rejected as we no longer have cap space for him. Uh, Gilly's also rejected. We don't have the money. So we'll have to give both of them qualifying offers in the meantime. Uh, and then I think the rest of the guys that had like smaller deals all accepted. So as you guys can see, everyone did sign except for Theodore, Russo, and Cernic, who all have qualifying offers on them, just for now. Uh, we only have like a little under $3 million in cap space, so... I mean, actually, we could try getting Theodore. He wants 3.7. I could give him the 2.8 offer. I doubt he takes it, but if not, we have the qualifying offer on him there just to ensure him to make sure we have time to make a trade. We also have the qualifying offer there on Gillies as well. So definitely have to trade away at least one, maybe two players, but either way, our team is looking very good for next season. And as you guys can see, Austin Cernick actually accepted our qualifying offer, which is really good. 81 overall, getting him at a qualifying offer, that really helps us out in terms of the cap. We're now at the free agent stage, guys. So I'll just give you a look at kind of what free agents are available, even though we're not going to have the cap to sign any of them. So we got Jack Johnson here, Brian Little, Evander Kane, Shea Theodore, of course. We're going to make a trade to uh, keep Patrick Marlowe, Peary, Nielsen. Kind of just gets pretty bad after that. But we do still have uh, enough cap and like just roster spots to try and sign some two-way contracts. I'll, obviously, I always like to go out and get the best uh, potential two-way guys. So uh, one top six forward there, 21 years old. I don't even know how to say this guy's name, but we're going out hard for him. Uh, definitely want him to sign with us. So we'll give him that offer. Philip here, 22, 17 overall. Like, I don't know how these guys don't get signed by their teams, but uh, whatever. I'll give him the offer, and hopefully he does come with us. Three more top nine guys. A 26-year-old is too old. Uh, this guy, though, 22, 78. That's another just really good player. Like, when he's young with that overall... Um, that high of a rating. How can you pass that up on a two-way deal as well? Uh, 21, 69. I don't know about him. Uh, 19 and 61. I don't know about him. I have to see the kind of contract spots. Uh, Mickelrath here, 23, 26, 73 overall. He's done. 20, 67, 23, 74. So I don't know about some of these guys. I'll wait and see kind of our roster spots uh, situation. If we do have enough roster spots, obviously. I'll give some of these guys an offer. We're here, guys, we're trying to make a trade with Nashville for Cal Jarnock. Uh, pretty solid winger here, 26 years old, 85 overall. Solid contract, too. He's making, like, 2.4 for the next two years. Trading them Gardner. He's a bomb pairing D-man for us. So we save about $1.5 million in cap space. Gives a chance for either Yulavi or Carlo, whoever's better at the start of the year, uh, to make that NHL jump. Also trading them a few prospects that we just drafted that are unsigned and probably never going to make the team. They don't have the greatest potential. So they make this deal. I think it's a solid one for us. Here we go. Trade accepted. So after that trade, we now have 4.3 million in cap space, which will be enough to sign Theodore. And uh, he wants 4.2, which is more than he wanted before, but he's on the open market now. So hopefully he'll say yes to like, I don't know, 3.75 or something. And then we'll still need about a million to get Gillies, but it shouldn't be too hard to find that cap. So as you guys can see, one of those unsigned prospects with good potential accepted Calvin Kurchurka or something. 77 overall, top 6 forward potential, that's awesome. Same with this guy, 77 overall, top 9 forward. 77 overall, top 9 forward, so uh, three of the best ones. Uh, still waiting to see what Theodore says. i also seen that we do have a bunch of roster spots, so might as well sign some of these guys with the high potential. Basically just a free addition to our team. So this working team guy, 19, 61 overall, top 9 potential. This guy here's got low top 9, but uh, 69 overall already, which isn't bad. Wheaton here, 23, 74 overall. He's got a few years left to grow. Maybe he'll turn into something. Probably not. Might as well just take a risk. Um, let's see here. Anyone else that's young? 
20 years old, 68 overall, high bomb six forward. That's not too bad. We can make that offer. We'll give him like three teams interested for some, some reason. So we'll give him like 700k. And I think that's it. We'll see if also there's any good goalies available too. So for goalies, the best available is a fringe starter here. 21 years old, 73 overall. Um, might as well do that, I think. Uh, even if he's like the third goalie in the AHL, just giving us give us another option. And as you guys can see, that four tier guy who had like three teams interested actually accepted our offer. So that's good to see. Um, this other dude, Tibu, accepted our offer. Um, we'll see if anyone else did, or just him. So also this working time guy accepted our offer. I'm not sure if there's anyone else that we made offers on. Uh, Wheaton there. I know Theodore as well. This goalie accepted our offer. Still waiting to see what Theodore says. And rejected. Have to offer him more money. I guess we'll give him the $4 million he wants. Right here, guys, I'm making a trade with the Calgary Flames for their second and third round pick in this year's draft. I'm trading them Russo here, who still needs a new deal. He's an RFA, 83 overall, which is pretty decent, but honestly, uh, I don't think he's going to be cracking our NHL lineup. It'll probably, like I said, be either Levy or Carlo. And then I really don't want to have to pay him to be in the AHL. And then Mueller here, we've, had, we've been paying to play in the AHL as our top pair, but I feel like if I can trade both these guys for a second and a third, uh, we save Mueller's cap. Uh, we don't have to pay Russo, so whatever that cap is. And then we can use the second and third round pick, which have about the same amount of value as these two guys, later in the season for a trade where, you know, contracts and uh, salary doesn't even matter. So basically it just helps us right now in terms of signing guys. And then even in the middle of the season, it's easier to make a trade with picks that have no contracts or salary tied to them than players. So we'll see if they say yes to this. I'm sure some of you guys aren't going to like this deal, but I think it's the one we have to make. And they do accept it. So I'm going to try signing Theodore again, guys, for $4 million for three years. Also, the cap's weird because it says we have 4.8, so it didn't change. Even though Mueller was making 1.3, and even if he was in the AHL, he's on a one-way deal, so it's, it would still affect the cap. So I don't know why we didn't save cap there. I'm kind of upset about that. But either way, I'm sure we'll be able to sign Gillies at one point, and hopefully uh, Theodore takes this deal. And as you guys can see, Theodore did accept, so that's awesome to have him. 86 overall really helps out our D. So after Theodore signed, guys, we still have 1.7 million in cap space. Need to sign Gillies now to be our backup. He wants 1.625. We'll give him like 1.55, I guess, for one year. Hope he'll take that. After that, we really aren't going to have any cap space. And our team's pretty stacked, a lot of young players. So the only deal I see us making is like a blockbuster for a really good player. We trade like a bunch of prospects and stuff, trying to win it right now. Other than that, though, I think we're just going to sit tight till the start of the season. And as you guys can see, Gillies did accept our offer. So uh, probably just going to sim here to the end of the summer, see what the overalls are at, and then decide if we want to make that big trade or not. So here, guys, they look at our lines going into next season. I think they're pretty solid. Right here's the forwards. we got Nylander, Matthews, and Tyler Johnson on the first line. Pashnak, Bergeron, and Forsberg on the second. Marchand, Hansel, and Yakupov on the third. And then Jarnok, Cernik, and Osmik on the fourth. Zernik's been in the AHL for the last few years, dominating like MVP almost every time. So hopefully he can, you know, get better. Maybe like an 83. That'd be awesome as our fourth line center. Defense here. Our defense is so good. Uh, Larson, CC top pairing. Burns and Theodore on the second, and then Krug and Ulevi, who's now an 84 on the third. Also, Theodore jumped from an 86 to an 88. So, defense is looking really solid there. In goal, we have Rask, who's 93 overall. Backing up Gillies is now an 85. He was an 83, I believe. So, a lot of young players starting to come through and just look really good on our team, which I can't wait to see, you know, how good this team is this season. HL team, guys, also looking very solid. You can see we got Matthew Kachuk there on the first line with Philip, who we just signed, and look. Kachuk's 82, so I'm sure next year, uh, maybe even if we make a trade, we have to call someone up, maybe this year, uh, he'll play in the NHL. Second line there, we have DeBrusque, Harkins, and Krostolev, and DeBrusque also an 82, so I mean, both these guys are just waiting basically to make the NHL. Uh, luckily, both of their roles are still depth forward, so no, they won't lose any like potential or anything playing in the AHL. We got Lemieux here, uh, Chorkov, and then Vosnilek on the third line, and then Deshezno, uh, Ling, and Ferrero on the fourth. Our HLD is also looking very solid. You guys can see we got Lozon and Carlo as the top pair. Belmore and Forslein on the second, and then Wheaton and Forer on the third. One thing to note, I'm let you guys decide for me. So we got Carlo here on the top pair. 21 years old, 83 overall, highly potential. His role, though, is a top six forward. So I'm trying to decide who should play in the NHL. Either Carlo, 83 with high elite potential, or do we go with Ulevi, who's an 84, 20 years old with low elite potential. So obviously, Carlo's got a bit better potential. Ulevi's younger, though, and one overall higher. So I'm trying to decide 
who's going to play, because I think whoever doesn't play will probably use in a package for like a huge deal to bring in a superstar, as we don't have injuries in this GM mode, so really no reason having someone like that on the AHL, especially with Lozon weight right there. Uh, if we could use one of them, both of them have a lot of trade value. Carlo, I think, has even more uh, to bring back like a superstar, help us finally win that Stanley Cup. I think it's definitely worth doing. So you guys let me know who you think should be in the NHL, Carlo or Ulevi. And then in goal here, guys, we have Erickson and uh, Vixton, 78 and 77. I think that's pretty solid for the AHL. So like I said, really excited for next season. I'm probably going to make a big trade during the season when I get a better idea of what everyone's panning out to be. HL team here, 83 offense, 84 defense, 82 goaltending. NHL team, 94 offense, 97 defense, and 94 goaltending. So that's it for this episode, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a thumbs up. Stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a nice day. Goodbye.